Welcome to our study on the Jesus Happy Plan. Now, McDonald's has a happy meal, but today we are talking about the Jesus Happy Plan. Now, we all like to be happy. God likes to be happy. Jesus likes to be happy. The angels like to be happy. So we're going to focus on the Jesus Happy Plan today. Now, God is love, and He wants to share his happiness with as many people who are at, who are willing to do it his way. If you want to do it your way, then you're outside of his plan, his purpose, and his will. Now the English word for happy only appears six times in the old King James Bible. So if you took out a concordance and you looked in the New Testament for happy you'd find it six times in the New Testament in the Old King James Bible. Now Jesus says in one place, John 13, 17, He says, if you know these things, if you know things about Jesus, happy are you if you do them. So this is in this lifetime, Jesus says, if you know these things and you're doing these things, then you're happy because you are doing these things. Now Peter, in 1 Peter 3, 14, says, if you suffer for righteousness sake, and that just means doing the right thing according to God's will. We, we can do the right thing according to our own personal pleasure, but he's, he's talking about if you suffer for righteousness sake, i.e. serving the will of God, Peter says, happy are you. Okay? And in 1 Peter 4, 14, there we read, if you are reproached, for the name of Christ, reproach, people get after your case. If you're reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. If the spirit of glory, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. So you're in the glory system. So this six times that we see it in the English reading happy, it comes from a Greek word that has a number, strongest number of 3107, but the Greek word 3107 occurs 50 times. So what happened to all those 50 happy references? Well, the Greek word means supremely blessed, or by extension, fortunate, or well off. So, you know, if you're happy, you can be considered extremely blessed. If you're happy, you can be considered fortunate. If you're well off, you can be considered happy. Now, most of the other times, apart from the six happies, that word is rendered blessed. Now, Jesus tells us we can be happy if, now the word if, you know, if you do something different, this doesn't count. But if you're doing what he says to do, it, Jesus says we can be happy if we are doing his words, which are the key to life. So we have this here to remind us, we're happy if we are doing what Jesus says to be doing. Luke 11, 28 says, but he said, yea, rather, blessed... Now, some people say blessed, some people say blessed, and you can say it either way. Blessed, happy are you, or are they, that hear, meaning hear with understanding, the Word of God, the true teachings of God, not the false traditions of men, but the true Word of God, and it says in the text, keep it. That was in Luke eleven twenty eight. 28. Well, keep it doesn't mean keep the Ten Commandments hanging on your wall. That's not keeping the Ten Commandments. It means practicing. So hearing with understanding the Word of God and practicing the Word of God that you have your understanding of. Now James we read in James 1 verse 25, but whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, and he said the word law, he said it's perfect, he said it's of liberty, of freedom. Right? Now what is he talking about? He's just talking about God's instructions. God's instructions on how we are to treat other people, how we are to live our lives. So he says, if you look into the perfect law of liberty and you continue therein, i.e. doing them, he, 
This person being not a forgetful hearer, so always doing it until your last breath, because there have been people who have begun the journey of being true believers and serving Christ, and then they've turned away from the truth under fables, and they're going to miss out on the first resurrection. Being not a forgetful hearer, always remembering, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed or happy in his deeds. He's going to be happy in what he's doing. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed or happy are they that do his commandments. Okay, commandments. Don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie. They're just God's instructions. They sound highfalutin and all theological and you know, deeply biblical, but they're just God's instructions. So blessed or happy are those who do his commandments that they may have right, that they may have access to the tree of life. What's the tree of life? It's everlasting life. It's eternal life. It's living forever. As I said, they're living forever. So blessed, this is Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they who do his commandments, his instructions. They're happy now doing his commandments, his instructions. Unless, unless you want to do your self-will. Unless you want to just do what you want to do, which is going to lead to the second death and misery and unhappiness. And there's a lot of that to go around on this planet. So happy now and forever if we do his commandments or instructions that they may have right to the tree of life, the eternal life, and may enter through the gates into the city, the eternal city. So you need eternal life to be in the eternal city. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the second resurrection. In the, I'm sorry, in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection on such... So happy and holy, blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. On um, those who are in the first resurrection, the second death has no power. Once you have been given uh, 1 Corinthians 15, spirit being, angelic body, then nothing, you are going to be alive for all eternity. Contrary to the false doctrine that is taught to two plus billion people, that you, once you're born, you have an immortal soul and you can never die. Jesus says you can die. Jesus says, yes, there is a second death. So you have to decide whether you want to believe traditional Christianity or what you see Jesus saying in the Bible. So the second death has no power. Jesus speaking through John on the book of Revelation. But they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years in the millennium into the future. So happy because we will be entering into glory. Romans 8.18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. God has planned for us to live in glory as God lives in glory. 1 Corinthians 15.42, So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. We have corruptible bodies that get old and decay and die and is raised in incorruption. Verse 43, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised, here it says, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 43, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. Oh, amen to that. The older I get, the more weakness I feel. And it is raised in power. How would you like to have a powerful, glorious body like an angel? Wow, awesome. Verse 44, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body that comes first, then there is a spiritual body which those who are happy doing Jesus' instructions will receive at the first record resurrection. Okay, now we're going to talk about being happy after death, which obviously, if you're in the first resurrection and you get a spirit being body, you are going to be happy in death. The second resurrection or happy after your physical death or your physical body dies. Paul shows that ungodly ways lead to eternal death. Like I said, the false doctrine is you have the mortal soul and that you'll live forever either in heaven with Jesus or in hell suffering and being tortured and so on. When God teaches differently, he says 
No, you will suffer the eternal death, which means a death that lasts forever, which means you'll never live again. You won't be alive again after the second death penalty is imposed. Romans 6.21 says, What fruit did you have then of the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. The end result of those things is death. Romans 6.22 But now having been set free from sin, meaning set free from the world's sinful practice ways, and have become slaves of God, you serve God every day, you think about God's ways and you serve God and you follow God's teachings, then you have fruit to holiness, to God's way, to serving God, and the end, the end of this way, is everlasting life. So you know, people think, well, just give your heart to Jesus and you'll have everlasting life. That's not what the Bible teaches. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Wages, if you look at that Greek word, means rewards or payback. Because <laughs> you don't think of, well, I sin and I'm going to get paid for it. Well, yeah, you will get paid for it. If you don't repent and turn to God's ways, you are going to get payback, which is, again, the second death, the eternal dead forever. It says, the wages of sin is death, on the one hand, by not doing things God's ways, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, if you're willing to do it His way. Not You're not earning your eternal life, but if you're willing to try and live by His code, by His standards, by His qualities, then He is willing to shed grace on you and give you, impute to you, eternal life and righteousness because you're making an effort to live godly, to live in service to mankind. Now God shows two results for human living. Revelation 21 verse 7, To him who overcomes, he who overcomes shall inherit all things, i.e. have eternal life, and I will be his God and he will be my son, son or daughter. Okay, but the next verse gives the other destiny for humans is Revelation 21 verse 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with light and with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So doing things the selfish way, doing things the way you want, doing the way that is not pleasing to God results in eternal death, whereas doing things the way God wants done, it results in eternal life because he wants to give it to you. Jesus wants all people to accept his offer of eternal happiness. In 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all, everybody, he wants everybody, should come to repentance. Repentance is the first step leading towards eternal happiness. If you repent, take that step, and continue serving Christ until your last breath, you will be in the first resurrection, you'll have eternal life, and nothing will ever change that. Now, all we have to do is, in Matthew 22, verse 37, all we have to do is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. In verse 39, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's basically what God is asking of us. So if we learn to love God by His ways, by His instructions, by His commandments, then Jesus gives us eternal life and happiness forever. 